maximum area of a triangle. A triangle has adjacent sides of 4 cm and 6 cm. Prove that the triangle has the maximum area when the angle enclosed by these sides is 90 degrees. So what we have here is a triangle with adjacent sides of 4 and 6 cm and angle included is theta. Now what do we need to prove? That is when this angle is 90 degrees only then it has maximum area. That is to say that we, if we need to maximize the area of the triangle what should be the angle inscribed between the two sides. So let's figure it out. So in a triangle what is area? Area of a triangle is half base times height. Now in this question we are given the base which is 4 and what is the height? Height is we dropped a perpendicular and height is CD. Now how can you relate height with the given situation? So we can write sine theta is equals to height which is CD right let me write this as H over hypotenuse which is 6 right so from here we can write height equals to 6 times sine theta right so that gives us height also so in this area formula we have everything so we can write down area as equals to half and base is 4 centimeter for us let's write 4 here and height is 6 times sine theta so that is area as a function of theta. Now it is easier for us. We can differentiate this equation with respect to theta and find when to maximize this. For what angle it is maximum. So let's simplify this first. We can write this equation as, let me write a as a function of theta given to us. It is half of this is 2. So we get 12 sine theta. So we get 12 sine theta here. Correct? Now if we differentiate both sides with respect to theta, what do we get? We get a dash theta as a function of theta is derivative of sine theta is cos theta. So we get 12 cos theta. Okay, now to maximize this, or rather let's find critical point or critical number. So for critical number, we know the derivative or rate of change of angle should be 0, right? Or 12 cos theta should be equals to 0. Now, when is cos theta 0? Cos theta is 0 for theta equals to pi by 2, right? So, that is the angle at which theta could be 0. So, that becomes our critical point. Now, we need to prove that at this critical point, we indeed have a maximum. Now, it is not necessary that critical point, whichever you get, you will always get a maximum or a minimum. Now, how to prove that you have a maximum here? So, we have two ways to do it. One is we can always check the rate of change around theta, right? So, we can see if, if I have theta here, which is pi by 2, and that is rate of change of angle. Now, if I take a value before this and after this, how does rate of change changes? If it changes from positive to negative, then yes, that is correct. Now, in this particular case, we are limiting ourselves to, uh, well, there's no need to limit. We can do that. So, if the value of theta is less than pi by 2, you know, cos in quadrant 1, that means you are in quadrant 1, is always positive. So, therefore, a dash theta will be positive, And since it is positive, a dash theta will be, like the function will be increasing, a theta, the area will be increasing as this angle is increasing. But immediately after pi by 2, what happens? At pi by 2, a dash theta is 0. But after pi by 2, you are in quadrant 2, right? In quadrant 2, let me give you a picture there also. We are talking about, so what we are saying is, if theta is less than 90 degrees, that means you are in this quadrant, quadrant 1. All are positive here, right? You remember the cost rule? But as soon as you move to quadrant 2, when theta is more than pi by 2, 
cos is negative so rate of change will be going down so you have a maximum here right this is one way to prove it and that is from first derivative test now let's also prove it using the second derivative test that means what we will do here is we'll find the second derivative right so if you find second derivative what do you get you get minus 12 sine theta that is the derivative for 12 cos theta now let's check whether this value a double dash is positive or negative at pi by 2 so what is this value at theta equals to pi by 2 so at pi by 2 it is going to be minus 12 sine of pi by 2 sine of pi by 2 is plus 1 and so we get a negative value now from the second derivative test if you get a negative value at the point of interest our point of interest was pi by 2 what does that mean it means the concavity is concave down so the function is like this now if you have concave down you have a maximum do you see that therefore from the second derivative test also so this is our second derivative test we prove that we indeed have a maximum when theta is 90 degrees or pi by 2 correct so now we can write down our answer that for theta equals to pi by 2 I prefer to write pi by 2 let me write 90 degrees also remember one thing whenever we are working with trigonometry we are actually working with angles in radians so we calculate answers in radians and then translate them into degrees okay so for theta equals to pi by 2 that is 90 degrees we indeed have maximum area right max area and we did it using both tests, which is second derivative test and the first derivative test. Let me write down there first derivative test. So that's a quick reminder of both the tests and how we are going to proceed with trigonometric applications. So that is how most of the applications in trigonometry we will be doing. We could test for maximum or minimum with either of the two tests okay and what we should do normally is when we read the problem sketch and try to find relation so that we can get the answer so here we sketched it we knew area is half base into height we converted we found a relation between the angle theta and the side and got the answer right that is how it should be done thank you and all the best